Hello, welcome to the channel and thanks for watching. It's time to paint what I think is the ultimate Nurgle Dreadnought, especially that I've ever done. Uh, now, I did this a couple of weeks ago and I've moved on to some other things in the meantime, and it's taken a while to decide what paint scheme I'm going to do because although this is for Death Guard and Nurgle, it's not for my kind of current Death Guard army that you've seen on the channel a lot. And there's reasons for that which I might go into later, or maybe that'll be for another video. Now, starting off the same way I do a lot of my Death Guard and a lot of my 40k, metallic undercoat, so it's the lead belcher undercoat tons of benefits to this i'll touch on as we go through the video and then going straight into the agrelin earth now agrelin earth if you've not used it before is a crackle paint it's a technical paint that when it dries it cracks up and things as you'll see here as i'm putting the next layer on so there's been a, a good gap of a few hours actually overnight in this case left before we put the next layer of paint on now the next layer of paint we're going into rakarth flesh very different to my traditional death guard army because this is going to be for the pallid hand death guard so i'm changing my kind of death guard color scheme up a little bit and there's going to be some more reasons for that now now this is a couple of thin layers of this rakarth flesh color because when you're putting it on you want to be really careful that you're not filling in those cracked paint areas that we've done because that would waste the effort now as you see here i was painted away started in the shoulder panels and this was the first layer of rakarth flesh and i realized no <laughs> they're supposed to be death guard green because if you're painting the pallid hand kind of normal uh, plain marine the shoulder pads are going kind to of death guard green and stuff and i wanted that to match in so no massive worry because i hadn't put two layers of paint on it's not blocked any detail taking out the death guard green and going over both kind of shoulder areas as though you're representing what it would be on the normal marine now i had already done two paint layers onto the knee pads and maybe i'd have done those in green if i had not already done that but i think it looks fine as we'll see on the final effect now moving on to the bones, a lot of kind of bone materials sticking out of this model because I did have a lot of fun when I converted this. If you've not seen the conversion video, uh, I'll try and remember to link it down below, but if not, it's on the Death Guard playlist on the channel. Uh, so yeah, tons of bone areas. When I'm painting the bone, trying to cover consistently, not leaving any of that metal undercoat showing through. And that's something I've not mentioned so far, actually. Moving on to the uh, red casings. Similar to what I've not mentioned before, when you're painting these other areas like the red gun casings, the green kind of shoulders, the Rakar flesh onto the armour, it doesn't matter if you leave metal showing through and actually you're intending to leave some of those areas where you've put battle damage and all those kind of things onto the model, you want to leave that base coat of lead belcher showing through because it adds to the damaged armour effect and that's why I think the lead belcher is a brilliant uh, way to undercoat. It does mean when you're doing things like the bases here, uh, you've got to be really consistent with this grey colour getting all the gaps and cracks in because you don't want metallic showing through there because obviously the road isn't metallic that's the kind of drawback if you'd undercoat this model black when it came to the base it wouldn't matter if you miss bits but i do think the the, the trade-off of having those extra battle damage areas is great the gray also goes onto the smoke and the vents coming out the top and you can see here i did some of that grell and earth crackle paint onto the base as well where it's kind of cracking away the cobbles now it's time to paint those just in that beastie brown color and all the colors are on the top left of the screen when i'm painting um but obviously you don't have to use those exact same colors you can you know go wild and do your entire own but it's just kind of a little bit of um inspiration if that's the word so moving on to a deep yellow color to all these little pustules and things that we've molded into all these areas and millie put and green stuff if you've not watched the uh, converting video and this is just how to sort of nurgle them up a really quick thing on wet blending here i'm taking the scream of pink onto the end of the tentacle now the start of these tentacles i've already painted with the rakar flesh from the original color scheme uh, and i got to kind of a yellow point doing the push jewels on the tentacles and went oh no hang on i need to do the actual blending on the tentacle stopped for a while put scream of pink as you can see there up to half the tentacle and then when the scream of pink is still wet uh, taking the rakar flesh putting that on the base of the tentacle and literally blending it together on the tentacle itself so that it gives that kind of gradation between the dark pink at the end of the tentacle going into the quite pale color at the base of the actual tentacle into the model taking some more rakar flesh and lightening it up as you go as well if you need to but it gives a nice blend running from a dark pink down into a sort of the, the, almost the rakar flesh color as the tentacle hits the base of the model there we go super quick wet blending i hope that made sense i do have other videos on the channel on it if you want to have a look um yeah and here's something i never thought i would say it's time to paint the butt rope kind of thing coming out of the sort of gnashing maw that i've done uh, on the bum of this uh, dreadnought again watch the video if you want to understand what that's all about but um painting that flesh on there now i've used the dreadnought from the leviathan box set so it's kind of more tyranid based but i left the kind of uh, plant kind of thing which is meant to be tyranid plants on the base of this model but actually it works really well bit of death guard green painted onto that and it blends in quite nicely uh, into that kind of nurgle scheme as well now we're onto the final details before doing the kind of manky layer a bad and black on the cabling 
Again, you could do tons of different colours on this. There are some cables, a number of cables around the model, but I don't want to go into too many colours. I want to keep it to a fairly muted palette. You can see I've used you know, the Rakar flesh on both the armour panels and all of the kind of push duly horrible um, nergly bits that we've moulded on. So it is a fairly uh, even colour scheme across there with the colours and tones. I don't want to go too wild with it. Now onto uh, Retribute Armour. You can see that actually I already painted the kind of... Um, when you call it scroll work and everything, I'd already painted it in that bleach bone colour or the bone white colour. Uh, decided that no, I didn't really match, wouldn't really go with what the Marines would have had painted on it. So I've gone to Retribute Armour to give some of the detailing on the brass kind of chest eagle that was on this dreadnought before the plague bearer that's in there burst its way out of, of its chest. When that's all dry, a really thorough coat of Vallejo sepia game wash. Now this is a dirty sort of grotty sepia wash. This really adds to the kind of grim dark effect of the model. If you watch my channel a lot, you'll know that this is what I normally use on my Death Guard, but I have used, especially recently, the, the Games Workshop sepia shade, which is a much less of a dirtier shade. Probably gives you an easier time after the shade, a bit less work to do, but I think this one gives a real nice grim dark effect. Now you could experiment and actually use a lighter sepia shade, give yourself a lot less work to do, or maybe even no work to do at this stage. But for me, this is how I do my kind of grim dark uh, Death Guard effect, and I quite like it. Now, we're going back with the same colours we've already used on the same areas. So we're using a Rakar flesh onto the armour panels here, and you can see I put a tiny amount of paint on there. It's very watered down because it's been on my wet palette since I did the original Rakar flesh layer, so a couple of days now, so it's watered down and it's quite thin. And really, going into super speed here again, you're spreading that little bit of paint out right across the armour panel. It's not quite a wash. Um, but it is getting to kind of that level. But you're putting a real thin layer on, avoiding the deep uh, cracks and gaps that you've seen, avoiding those areas where the, you've left uh, the metallic base coat showing through with the initial kind of paint scheme, and putting a real thin layer on so it gives what I think is a really nice, grim, dark, dirty effect. And my painting style is a little bit unusual. You don't tend to see this kind of thing, um, but I think it gives a nice balance between kind of grim, dark, but not so grim, dark that you can't see any of the details. I hope that kind of makes some semblance of sense. Now moving on to the other colours, with this sort of section after the wash level, this is just using the exact same paint you've already used, and that's kind of the beauty I find of using that dirty wash, is that you don't have to then go and invest in another whole round of different paints through the highlighting layer, you can use the same paint you've already used. And again, being very careful at this stage, no matter what colour you're using, and what area you're going on to leave the wash showing and all the gaps and cracks and also the areas where it joins on to another section so you can see the metallic here on that kind of uh, on the horn sticking out i've just avoided going in near the metallic so it leaves that shade into all the crevices of running into the metallics and gives a real nice effect doing exactly the same with all the other colors whether it be the red on the gun casings whether it be um you know the rakar flesh that you've used onto all the push jewelry bits sticking out exactly the same kind of technique Onto the basing now. Now this has been based to match the rest of my Death Guard army, although it will not be going alongside my full Death Guard army. Um, reasons for that, I might do a totally separate video about why I'm switching from standard Death Guard to kind of pallid hand. Well, maybe if you're interested in a discussion on that. Now final details onto the uh, little nerglings. First time I've ever used nerglings on, on bases actually, which is very, very strange after doing Death Guard for a number of years. Using two contrast paints, we're using a Majors Purple and a Plague Bearer Flesh. What I'm doing on here is the kind of pustuly nerdly up bits you can see. I'm using more of the purple and a little bit of the Death Guard green. On the nerglings, I'm doing more Death Guard green and a little bit of purple. In fact, in most cases, I only use the purple, as you can see here, just on the bellies, just to give it a little bit of a different colours and shades. So because we've used a lot of Rakar flesh on a lot of models, we've used it on the armour panels, we've used it on the converted nergly bits, and we've used it on the nerglings and the Plague Bearer, this kind of wash level is another way of differentiating all those different areas. Okay, now as all washes and all that kind of stuff are dried, I've actually given it a, a layer of varnish, because then these, this last uh, Nurgle's Rot, that we're using doesn't do well when you varnish over the top of it so we've given it a layer of varnish and now it's time for Nurgle's Rot the greatest Death Guard paint by far so a really good layer of Nurgle's Rot onto all those yellow areas all the push jewels all the areas in the base and then finishing off with a little bit of Nylac Oxide which is just a way of showing that brass has oxidized across the model and that is it that is the completed model um, I really like it, particularly like the Nurgle gnashing more butthole that we've got on there um, and some of the Nurglings kind of that we painted for the first time. The Plague Bearer looks like a happy chap bursting out the chest of this Dreadnought. So yeah, really nice conversion, um, really happy with how it's gone. And if you did enjoy that, like, comment, subscribe, and hopefully I will see you 
on another video.